and faith in us. My father is my number one hero and my spiritual mentor. We used to sleep in the back room and the back room is where the boys slept. You had to find a spot on the floor. They gave us the best they could. I never thought the day would come that I would be advising governments, presidents of countries who call me. How do you become an influence? How, how do you rise from the floor? And sometimes people think, oh, you're a special person, that's why. That's not true. I believe there is what I call a divine imperative. Every human being was created by God to be an influence on earth. Every human being. Most of them die and never influence their neighborhood. Second imperative, influence simply means to dominate in life. Anyone who has influence is simply a person who is dominating an environment that they are in. They have this force that comes with their life that make people listen to them or make people respect them or make people believe them. All of us are influenced by somebody. In other words, those persons have dominion. Whoever dominates an area of life will have influence on planet Earth. If you look at all the influential people, I'm not talking about just the famous, because some of them ain't influential, they're just famous. Don't confuse fame with influence. Fame is like a flame, it goes out. Influence is what lasts even after you're dead. Influence means that your life has so much dominion that even death can't destroy it. Listen to me, please. You are too old to not start being influential in your life. You are too old. You were placed in time to influence your generation. That's why God took you out of eternity and put you in a body. Because he wanted earth to be influenced by you. And we confuse influence with popularity. Not Everyone who is popular will be influential. As a matter of fact, the word popular is from the root word population, which means that the population likes you for a while, and then they'll crucify you later. Influential people are not necessarily popular. They are impactful. Jesus Christ was not popular, but we can't get rid of him. He was influential. I put it to you then, that we have to learn what is influence. Here is a statement made by Jesus Christ concerning you and me who are in the kingdom concerning influence. He said these words in Matthew 13 verse 33. He told them another parable it says and here's the parable. He says the kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman put in a large amount of dough and it worked its way into the dough until all of the lump was full of yeast. This statement is about influence. God sent you to earth to be an influence just like yeast. You were not born just to exist. You were born to make a difference and born to make an impact. And I am convinced that God has had it up to here with people just treading water. God is saying, I want you to be an impact, an influence in the earth. I put it to you. That God put you in time so that you could make this influence. Write this down please. God lives in eternity. And eternity is time without measure. And therefore we were placed in time for a purpose to fulfill purpose. And that purpose is to give meaning to our lives. We were sent here to make an impact. To make a difference. I didn't realize that until I began to study the Bible as a teenager. I'm not special or unique. I just discovered something. And I want to show you what I discovered tonight so that the next 12 months you will begin to work on what I discovered so you could discover it. I put it to you that you were born to influence time. And you don't need to live long to influence the planet. Think about the oldest man that ever lived. His name is Methuselah. The Bible says one verse about him. It says Methuselah lived to be 900 and 30 years and then he died. 969 years rather and then he died. That's all we know about the guy. He died. Jesus lived to be 33 and a half years old. And then he died. We can't remember Methuselah. But we can't forget Jesus. Age therefore is not a measure of impact. I put it to you then. That God gave us time so we can live life in what I call phases. God gave you a year at a time. A month at a time. 
a week at a time and a day at a time so you can live life in doses I love the way the psalmist David said David says this is the day not the month the day the Lord has made I will rejoice in it the day what have you done with your last 10 days that have moved you forward in your purpose how have you spent your time the last 24 hours and how did that contribute to your progress of your passion and your dream he gives us life in phases you were never given birth to attach yourself to a phase let me tell you something I thank God for years because you can now look back and say I had a failure in this area five years ago thank God for years years pushes things back years delivers you from the memory and the pain of things thank God for time please don't be attached to phases never let a phase define you you know right now you're single you ain't married well that's only a phase don't get attached to that and when you get married you gotta shift from that phase now you can't go with the friends anymore you used to go to anytime you feel like no more God has given you a new year to set you free from the old year each phase prepares you for the succeeding phase every year that God gives us was supposed to be preparation for the next one the problem is if you didn't know what you were supposed to do in the year that you had then you are going into the next one unprepared or ill prepared that's why God gave you the capacity to think and to plan I put it to you that you must enjoy your face but never become your face some of you got a good job now let me tell you something you ain't know what gonna happen to that company so don't get attached to your job nor your title and if you find your value in your title you are in trouble no phase is forever I'll never forget some advice that was given to me by one of my greatest mentors in life dr. all Roberts he said son expect the best and prepare for the worst that means have a good attitude but don't be stupid whatever you're going through right now I guarantee will not last that includes the bad times and the good times here's your assignment the key to bringing forth your fruit in this generation number one the seed must first be in the right environment choose your associations number two isolation listen to me young woman young man if you're gonna become great you gotta isolate yourself from friends for a seed to become a tree it must be hidden under the ground when they ask you where you been you tell them I've been reading how come you don't go to parties no more I've been listening to tapes you in isolation yes I'm germinating that's number three you gotta germinate every single seed must die die means self-discipline you die to old friends old habits old associations old club life old friendships old associations cut them off why I am going to develop myself number four every seed must germinate germination means you motivate yourself from a source you got to find people who motivate you that makes you germinate listen to tapes read books go to seminars and keep coming with dr. Monroe we'll germinate you you gotta be around people make you dream big think big believe big let them germinate you is that tell you, you you know you can't do that you ain't got the intellectual capacity leave them immediately leave them alone you gotta germinate number five is critical you gotta water the seed water means that you constantly develop a program to manage your development you join organizations you put yourself on a reading program I'm gonna read two books every month you know mine is four books a month that's my program that's my that, that's my watering program I join professional organizations that send me CDs every month so I can develop myself and I can water myself number six critical fertilizer that means you have to refine and refresh your program to constantly grow yourself some people are poisoned they are pollution in your life you need fertilizer you don't need pollution he said there are people who add to you subtract from you multiply you or divide you you got to choose the ones who add to you and multiply you and avoid those who divide you and subtract to you find your subtraction friends and then leave them alone